a unique hustle, nigga, yeah. big dick, big dick. Huh. Name another podcast like this. None. Check it, check it, check it. Yo, <laughs> check it out. Yo, check it out. Yo, check it out. <laughs> check it, check it, check it, man. Hey, it's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Mr. Jamaica down here in Houston, Texas. Yes, yes. you know, this is the city that Jamaicans just like populate like 100%. Jamaicans really? everywhere over this. Yeah. Look how he looking at me like. Is mm. that true? You know, walk on and Jamaicans in the house. What are you talking about? Yeah. Boy, these folk down here lost their damn mind. Got on. <laughs> she done came down here and put See, on a Jamaican colored shirt on. I got my really on thing too? is yeah. she really gonna come down here That's and flex up, in Houston. And guys, I'm gonna be honest with you, this thing is more Americanized than you could ever believe. You know, we it's a few you know Jamaicans. What? what a Jamaican. You seen any? I'm not one. As a matter of fact, I was just telling her that, you know, anything that I haven't really experienced, I kind of like blame Deezy for it. So I haven't been really around like, you know, no Jamaican food. I don't know really too much about it. The Jamaican culture, I don't know much about it outside of Shadows. You know what? Belly. When you come back to Dallas, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm gonna make sure you know about it. Just okay. wait. Just watch. Okay. And see. You yeah. you gonna cook it yourself? Right? Exactly. Right. Okay. Of course. Like he asked me earlier. He's like, "Can you cook? Like really?" Promises, what promises, promises. I can't do yeah, that's how I Yeah, 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 yeah. See, See that's how I got your boy right here. It's one of them, but I what? By cooking. Don't set up. See, you coming on here. That's camping. how I got you. You know, really to be honest with you. It was that crown royal I bought over there. No, that day. Uh -huh. you, see, you don't even you don't even drink. So yeah, how but you is drunk it? it. That's all I needed. I'm, you don't drink? I Bill Cosby no. a little bit. I just gave it to you and it was real little <laughs> really? okay. Yeah, I did it like that. You well, know. here we is 25, 30 years later and we still kicking it, man. That's so, it. And that's, that's the main hard. thing. That's it don't hard. matter how we got together as long as we still together. That's all exactly. that's, that's one thing. So let's stay together. You know what, man? And then you sitting right. in the middle, really that supposed to be my seat right there. You know, you don't even both be sitting in the middle I'm like a mediator. No, it I'm just seemed like sure. you interviewing somebody else. See, like that frequency y'all was establishing was going, and I got it right back. That's that's what I'm here to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm glad y'all came down here. You know, y'all family, anytime you coming around, you know, it's a must that I come out. Greet you, meet you, and see what's going down with you. Boss how one on one his family. Yeah, Man. especially because he represents Houston, Texas. He always talked about Houston, but he talked about East Texas too. So you <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, he, but he, he out of line, you know, a lot of well, times with a lot of the stuff that he say, so I'm not gonna feed into it. Okay. He feel like he, you know, he really don't represent nowhere. He represent himself. I represent and Davis he Street. Like he wanna I represent really, 300 No, miles. not really like you posed to. You did all that already. Davis. You done changed, man. So you don't you represent don't Houston. Yeah. Yeah, he Do you represent Houston? Houston? Yes. Awesome. But how is that? But okay, how is how is that? You answer this question. Whenever you represent, because you're born and raised Davis Street, right? Yeah. Okay, but then now you move to Houston, you represent in Houston, but you have some people who will say, but he not Houston. I'm just playing. Like, this is what it is on that right there. I, yeah. I always joke about it. East Texas, Longview, Texas is my home. I'm from Davis Street, 300 block. Houston have embraced me with open arms, open up. Uh, a lot of opportunities for me. They family here is the same as, you know, Dallas, Austin, Houston, though, is my real, that's my home. My family is here. I moved everybody here and this is where we rocking from. This mm -hmm. is my new home. You know, it, you know, of course, I'm from where I'm from. You ain't, I'm never, can't run from it. I'm too well known where I'm from, but, um, yeah. Because Houston. you know how society now, especially in, in this industry, especially when you rep certain places, because that's where you spent most of your life, although you weren't mm -hmm. born there, people who are born there be like, I don't understand how he or she is repping this. Man, that's, that's a poor, a poor mind frame. Mm -hmm. In Texas, you know, it's not, especially coming from the, the kind of background, the kind of story that I got, everybody... It, it, people all around Texas know my first, middle, and last name. Know how long I'm like. They know where I'm from. Mm -hmm. We all know where each other is from. One of What's them, your middle? I won't say it online. <laughs> I think I got it on that document. But if I was to say it, it, it that, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I a lot you. of people in this state they know my first little, and I know theirs. I know they mm -hmm. name. They know my. So it's like it's just something that I say. But H Town is definitely my home, and I'm just very happy to be here. But of course, you know, I'm from uh, I'm from Longview, Texas, and I'm from Davis Street for sure. That's really where I'm from, Davis Street. Man, I ain't going to lie. Every time I hear that music, man, when you, you the way you put it down, man, the way you, you do it, man, like like it make a nigga want to go to Davis Street. Yeah. You made a nigga want to go down there and check out. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've seen the video, nigga. I want to go down and check it out. That first yes, day out, my, one of my favorite ever, mm. to be honest with you, I don't 
I don't play about that song. That's how I introduce niggas to you. And Man. it's like that, that I never get past that because it's so raw and real. You know what I mean? Man, thank you. We just we just run around and just do it, man. Just put it out there, put our best effort, put our, our energy and our heart into it, be fully passionate about it and just see where it takes us. And it's done led us here. So with this album right here, getting that opportunity to put it out in the biggest way possible, we just, you know, we're just trying to take full advantage of the opportunity we've been given, for sure. Man, so when you, uh, when, okay, so we, we know already what what really the elephant in the room for me when I came down here to H-Town this time, mm -hmm. uh, it was a little different for me coming down here because I knew what I was coming for, but I, I, I know what's being said in the media and how people are looking at what just happened down here with Takeoff. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm coming, but it's like, I feel a certain way coming down 45 this time. Like, dang, man, like, wow, you know, this really happened. And, Man, like, what are people temperature at right now okay. in the city? Like, the that's, city? That, that's the way I was thinking. Mm -hmm. um, made a few phone calls. I know I'm solid, but at the end of the day, I still want to just see what's going on down in H-Town, you know? Right. So just give me a spill on how you well, feel about well, like the I, temperature. The temperature is great. Uh, we lost somebody great in hip-hop. Um, we lost an icon, a young icon, a, a dude that, you know, as one-third of the Migos, you know, iconic, one of the biggest groups that it's ever been in, in this rap thing that we have. And um, what I think a lot of people, if you if you go to different cities, whether it be the Memphises of the world, New Orleans, Atlanta, and, you know, different places like this, Miami, I think that one thing that you can kind of lose track of is that because these cities have a certain significance in hip hop, you think that they all pretty much the same in, in uh, how big they are. Like people really need to try to get it through their head. Houston is humongous, it's very big. So, you know, you can be a part of, or hanging with some people and we never hear anything about it. You, you might be insulated inside of a group of individuals and you know, us being on the south side or these people being on the east side, they may not ever, ever run into you, never contact you at all. People on the south side don't really navigate to the north. They don't really even go over there. I'm talking about it all. Like they, People spend their whole life on one side of town, and it's not because they so closed-minded. It's because this thing is humongous. This is a big-ass city. So I'm saying that to say that it's not really smart necessarily to believe that because something happens in Houston, that it is the attitude and behavior of the majority of the, the Houstonians or the people that's inside of that culture that feels that this should happen or that, you know what I mean? Or, or that knows and, and all of this stuff. So I just try to caution people to be careful who you hang with when you come down here, you know, um, of course, mind your business, like my bro I always say, but try to make sure you with people that you feel that you would feel comfortable bringing your mom around, bringing your bringing your significant other around. And if you feeling any kind of weird vibes, or anything like that, try to disassociate. I'm not saying anything about, you know, I don't know about how they infrastructure work or how the infrastructure or how you got killed or whatever. But when you moving around, man, just be try to make sure follow your gut instinct, you know, and and put yourself in a position where you understand that. It's very precious what I have here, which is my life. I'm going to move like that. I'm going to make sure that when I'm out of town, I got the right energy going and people this. Uh, like I tell people this all the time. And this is just from being in the streets. You should know this. I always act different out of town than I do at home. You know, when you at home, you know, everybody, you know, what's up, you know. But when you out of town, the job is to make it home. So you want to put yourself in a mind frame and in a mindset and in an energy of, I got to make it home. So that's going to prevent me from arguing in a way that I that I wouldn't nor that I wouldn't normally or that I probably would argue maybe if I was back home and I was on more comfortable ground. But when I'm down here, man, I'm not finna. Don't just when you're out of town, act like you're from out of town. Mm -hmm. Be very cordial. You know, make sure you're taking care of your business. Try to minimize all of that bullshit and drama and make it back home, man. That's the most important but thing. But you got to think about this, though. People who visit a certain city 
time after time after time mm-hmm. feel so at home that they don't feel like they're just visiting, uh, you know, being a tourist, so to say. Yeah. They feel like this is their city as well. But it's not. You When you get, you can't allow yourself to get too comfortable in other people, where other people have grown. And because the, the thing about it is you can be around people and you think because of a relationship that you exactly. have with, with this individual. Exactly. That it's going to supersede the relationship that they have. And that's what I was thinking. I was thinking about example, like we come to Houston and mm. everybody in Houston respect you and love you and they have a certain, you know, respect for you. And then I'm hanging out with you thinking that, OK, I'm going to get the same respect, too, because I'm with you and everybody love you. So I'm good. If you get into it with somebody's that's in somebody's entourage mm-hmm. who may be who may seem like, you know, an inconsequential person mm-hmm. to you. Because you and I might be here Mm -hmm. and this person might be there to us or whatever. Mm -hmm. But this person, you don't know the relationship between Mm -hmm. these people. Mm -hmm. Something got these people in this room. Right. You know, so you got to always just be conscious of the fact that you the odd man out, Mm -hmm. the odd person out. Anytime you out of town. And I'm a thinker. Behave accordingly. I'm a thinker. And he always say I watch too much TV. Mm -hmm. But um, TV ideas come from reality. A lot of them do. Not all, but a lot of them do. And when I say that, when I see entourages or people who um, you have a person of this status and they have their entourage with them, you can't control everybody that's with you. That's why a lot of time when something goes wrong or something gets messes up, it's because of somebody in that entourage does do something that's out of character whether we go to a certain hotel and I, and I got everybody rooms but one person over here had to mess up that room because they think they it just sounds to me like you describing niggas <laughs> and and at the end of the day <laughs> yeah you can control it if you're not going to be able to be controlled then you can't be around mm. and it's just that that we that we now process of making sure that you got the the elite around you because what's at stake is your life and your livelihood, the two most important things that you have here. But I hear that a lot because someone made You hear that a lot amongst niggas. niggas you, don't, right. you don't hear Jeff Bezos saying, damn, man, I don't know why I brought him. You don't hear Mark Zuckerberg talking about, damn, I shouldn't, I knew better than I'm sure probably in their earlier years before they got that big, maybe. You know, we wouldn't hear about it because number one, you didn't have, you know, as much social media and stuff like that back then. But... I guarantee you had some knucklehead around. Y'all know we talking about niggas. <laughs> you know, I, I, I really, you know, when, when I think about, you know, just somebody of that magnitude going through that here, uh, it's not a norm. We can't normalize what happened here, you know. No. Like, and, and the thing is, but it does happen. You know what be missing in these conversations <coughs> when, we, when we be talking about this? It be a lack of, of under, a lack of communication about frequency and where you at spiritually when you're around, sir. Man, That's true. Why we if you out if you out three four in the morning arguing, you know, with whatever drug with, with whatever that we drugs or whatever that we own that that we done been ingesting throughout this five six seven sometimes all day period. By the time we three four, man, our our ability to really reason with one another it gets short man late at night man now i don't give a fuck man I, I i'm not caring i'm not thinking about things in the same fashion as i was hours ago before that you know whatever drugs that i was doing and all that so once the frequency get a little tainted man shit can happen that's why you gotta try to make sure that you have yourself in some settings and surroundings that's conducive to you leaving with the blood still in your body. You got it's up to you to protect your life and to move in that way and don't put yourself in these situations that can be a little now some people, you know, it it, it can end up being what they call like happenstance or or uh uh something that just seems accidental. A lot of this shit seems preventable, but we just we just don't want, we want better results, but we don't want to change our behavior at all. We we just want to just receive something good. We want to be able to make it home and we think that you shouldn't be tripping and you should know better and all of this type of shit, but you're not going to never take that responsibility of, hey man, what the fuck is I doing out at three, four in the morning, man? Shooting some whole ass dice. I'm, I'm a million, I'm rich as fuck. What I'm doing? Like, you got to, at some point, you got to start taking your life seriously. 
because you might not make it home. It's but, really that simple. But the, the thing that, that I looked at next is a week or so later or whatever it may be, uh, Kodak Black, you hear he came down here and got into a fight with somebody. I hear that happens. Now, whether it was true or whether it wasn't true, it just like, damn, like right after that, you hear something else, you know, trickle effect type mm -hmm. situation, you know. Um, what does it make a city look a certain way when things start to just happen? Like, boom, Man, boom, boom, I, boom. I don't, if that's if that's kind of like a narrative that people are wanting to paint about, man, I don't think a lot of shit happens in this city of of over five million some odd people in the metropolitan area, probably seven some million people in this metropolitan area. And you're talking about like niggas, man, niggas being niggas, niggas be getting themselves in these compromising positions by acting and behaving like niggas. And then when it go down, we act surprised about it. Like, I mean, what do you, I mean, I've been in the streets all my life. What you know about dice games? I know that my daddy got shot in the head at a dice game and my uncle got, got killed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, my daddy got shot in the head and, and he die. lived, he didn't die. Matter of fact, he kept a bullet in his pocket after that. Uh, and then my other uncle got shot in the back of the head in the same place and my other uncle- In burnt, the same place. In the same place, my uncle, my other uncle burnt it down so nobody else wouldn't be in there. Yeah, we ain't going in there no more. He, yeah, like, like he basically- He had my mentality. Yeah, yeah, he, he burnt that whole down. Because yeah. it was like, my brother both, one of my, but he really was more the one that got killed that messed with him enough to where he burnt it down. And my brother had, uh, I mean, my uncle had, my, my dad had nine nine brothers. But I so, got a we, question. so we recognize that the bullshit we know happens that, at that, that, it yeah, happens in, nice game. But I got a question about that though, because um, you say you, your daddy got shot in the head there, but let me ask you a question. After he recovered, did he ever go yeah, back there? Back. Hell yeah, you see, so you talk about black folks mentality, like why would you go back to the same place that you got you gotta, shot you again? Gotta show yeah. That, yeah. You gotta show him that, now you gotta go back now. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but you but gotta go back. My father, I, that wasn't even for him when it happened. But he got to come back and but let him know, let yeah, him bitch, know. I, I'm back in this moment. Yeah, and and I know that that first day that he probably walked back yeah. up and them niggas probably like, damn, that nigga back up in this bitch. Put your bullet in his pocket, right? This is wild, man, like, and you know, just the, the whole attitude like you say for gambling I have so many stories that I can tell you that where people got robbed at the gambling shack or people got my I seen my pop shout out to uh well I ain't gonna put in my dick yeah he got he, he like to get died up in that hole because at the end of the day it always be some confrontation with like like you saying that I want to be on camera saying this because if anything might happen to me and I want to be on camera saying some shit like this um gambling Niggas shooting dice, that's nothing but a den of just eat like spirits. It's, you can just tell that shit be influenced by some supernatural fucked up shit. The devil. Yeah, you can see it. We can see how people turn the, the kind of evil that people can get at dice games, winning and losing. Winning and losing, we just see it happen. So we know that that shit is a den for some bullshit. Any gambling, period, no matter what, because nobody likes to lose. Nobody like to lose. Gambling. If everybody was winning, everybody be happy. Everybody be good. Everybody can't win. But everybody can't win. Somebody got to lose. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, you know, niggas been gambling for a long time. Not yeah. just in Texas. We gonna, we gonna, we gonna gamble, but testosterone, pride, and ego, and and just that ability to be become possessed, man. We get like we be having some shit flowing through us. Late at night, typically, and around women and money, man. Women and money and shit and, and gambling and talking shit. And that shit can lead to something dangerous, man. So and you just face to careful. face with these people. But what, but people you, think you cheating. Spike maybe they don't think you're cheating. Maybe it's just <laughs> you winning and I'm losing, I'm losing and I'm looking for a reason to fuck this shit up. Some you know? people yeah. are sore losers. I seen, I, I've been in a dice game where I, I shot, rest in peace, uh, Ray Ray. Um, you he, shot him? No, I shot the dice. Oh. When I shot the dice, the nigga uh he get he uh he was losing. So mm -hmm. the nigga, you know, I shot and I shot five as my it was my point. Mm -hmm. I grabbed my money. He said it was seven because of the two. The, you he know, only seen one of the dice. I, in his mind, I guess. I said, nigga, that was five. I, I I took my money up. I never forget it. He went and got in the car, got his pistol, set it back up there, and we kept shooting. 
So you, you, did you have to give him his money back? No. You had to show no. him your nuts was big. Nigga, I ain't lay off. We shooting. And you gonna oh, keep he's, showing, he's showing you, like, try that again. That's what it, that, in his mind. Just try that again. But he's known for doing it. He got shot twice. Uh, he got hit by two bullets for uh, pulling his gun out and shooting. That's well, what really, he, he do. Upped he, a, he upped the he pistol upped. on you, and you didn't do anything. You no, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't. You didn't, didn't take out him. yours and put it down to, no, like, No, we already was strapped. Everybody's strapped to the dice game. He just had to get his approval point, and he got it, I guess, because he used to pull his pistol. He loved it. You done met people like that. They love to act like they got it. He actually pulled his pistol on you, really. Nah, he didn't. I got my money. He didn't rob me or nothing. He didn't rob you, but he letting you know. He sent the message. Yeah. Because of the way he was, he did and gone today. Rest in peace, Ray Ray. Because of the fact of... uh, Putting that pistol. Not because he... he, The type of plays that he would get into, but it was a a dude... Like, it's certain people, like, when you go to the club, and I don't know if y'all experienced this, but certain people always was into it with somebody and 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 that that certain niggas do that you know so a good dude we did a lot of stuff together but that was just some, one of them times when you grow up with a nigga y'all we mm. we might do that next day we shooting again never even think about that yeah it's that's, a norm well that's because you possessed by them demons and, mm. and, they, <laughs> and once they out of you you don't remember what happened mm. once we go back we're gonna go back tomorrow yeah we hung out after that i got a question because you, you were talking about drugs earlier and i remember having um someone on the show once and they talked about that almost everybody in the industry whether it be music film whatever oh, is um is on drugs for creativity purposes i think a lot of people participate in recreational drugs in this whether it be thing. syrup or because when people think about drugs, they're thinking about cocaine. Well, the guy, if we talk about whatever. hip hop, hip hop is of the culture. It is the culture. So, so does drugs have to go along with the culture? I, I think that you can only control yourself. But there's a lot of people that participate in drugs in the culture. There's no getting away from that. Why? Why is it so? Why do people do drugs? Yeah, in Boy, this if you, culture. If, if you knew, well. Does it have to go hand in hand? Like, can't you have? I can somebody tell you. said there's no sober, and I, I, I was no trying sober. to figure it in the music industry. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, hip hop, but I even said, so what happened to country or what happened to gospel? And they were like, well, drugs is in all these different music industries. I can only speak on hip hop, and when it come to when it come to hip hop, I just think that we live in. Um, it comes from the streets. This rap shit, it come from the streets, so. Typically, when people is making it out of the ghetto, mm-hmm. you you telling tales and telling stories about the things that it is that you like to indulge in, and um, what you see, what you experience. I come from the crack era, so that's in my music. I, that's I so crack. We we've been affected by drugs probably more than any other culture. If you're talking about blacks in America, so. It's going to be in the music. Some people are going to abuse it. Some people that n- might not necessarily be the ones that are taking the drugs. That's what I was about to say. But they addicts still the same because we grew up selling the drugs. It's, we You're not escaping drug culture in hip hop. Did you used to do syrup or any of that sort of stuff? Have I before? Yes. Yeah. No, I'm because they... I'm because they no, no, not soda. I I'm mean, I've, I've, drank I've, I've, I've drank syrup, yes, but no. I haven't went no drink head. Okay, because <laughs> the reason why I'm asking that because they make me feel like once you're in that hip-hop culture, yes, you know, there's some who sell it, but if you sell it, eventually you end up taking some form of... Hip-hop, it doesn't have to hip- be cocaine or any of that right. sort of stuff, but it could be syrup, weed, whatever. Like, there's no sober um, no, hip-hop rapper. Is a, hip-hop is a vibe business, and there's more people that's, that's sober than... Than what you would think, like like. This, As a young kid, because you might have done it when, you, and now you're not. But coming into the industry, are all these youngsters on this stuff? I don't think all of of any, but, but there's definitely a lot of people that that participate in drugs. I will tell you another thing. I don't think that a, a lot of successful mm-hmm. uh, entertainers in hip hop do drugs to the level that people think they do okay. because of their music. Well, I, I, At the end of the day, it's entertaining. I got to interject mm-hmm. in that because because I don't believe that. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, you know, I just had, shout out Little Soldier Slim, and he talked about Lil Wayne, and he went and uh, he actually walked up on Lil Wayne, him and Juvenile was together, Lil Soldier Slim, and he was like, hey, my dad is a Soldier Slim, man. I just wanted to introduce myself. And, and he, he said he told him, I'm I'm I don't give I don't give a fuck about that. I'm God. 
And and basically he uh after that he walked off, my boy said. But at, at the end of the day, I was like, I asked him about it when we was in ATL and he was like, Yeah, he did that, but more than likely he was on drugs or something. He say he said Juve told him I should have slid that boy, but I but listen, here's what I'm saying is basically he excused it with the fact that the drugs probably were influencing him in a way to made him act like that. I think that when we hear these when we hear these stories or whatnot, I think that a lot of times people don't understand what an artist be dealing with, especially an artist of magnitude like a, a Wayne or somebody. This is taxing on the nerves being in this shit because it's a lot of perceptions and you be dealing with a lot of stress. But when the camera is on, you are supposed to be like a, you know, uh, you you're at your best when the camera is on when the camera not on you not working and somebody coming into your space that you not necessarily that you don't know everybody coming smiling and trying to you know figure out a way to get something from you and shit like this so at the end of the day man i'm pretty sure you, hey man fuck you i don't even know you Re really like get out of my face you know i don't know about the individual so <laughs> slim Jr. but but when you think about it it was a it, it, you know you see lil wayne lil wayne has seizures lil wayne have all these issues because of uh some people alleged it to be drugs. So when you say that these artists are not on hard drugs, I uh, beg to differ. These dudes would do, this, this, listen, man, they okay. do a lot of drugs just to stay listen. up. Okay, I, and I always fall back on this. When you start looking at, I think Lil Wayne is like 39 years old, right? Yeah. Something like that, pushing 40. We are talking about a dude that's been in entertainment since he was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Like, this man is still here right now, on tour now, you know? Like, cut it out with some of this extraordinary drug shit. How many people that you know that do drugs, that got, I'm talking about they was just doing drugs that they can afford, right? To the best of their ability, they doing their drugs. They they got them died or, or they fucked all up or whatever. You talking about somebody that's supposed to be so no. hard on lean, so hard on all of this cocaine and drugs since they was a little kid, but somehow, some way, they can still go out there uh, on the road for 50 some days out the year, still produce uh, uh, music at the highest output in the game. They gotta miss me with some of that. This man has been literally doing this since he was a, a teenager. Here he is pushing 40 and you know, and he's still at it. So uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Somebody said to me one time, um, cause I asked, I was like, well, you know what? Black folks take drugs, white folks take drugs, right? Okay. What's the difference why you see a lot of black folks getting OD'd and all this other stuff happening? And what the response to me was, which I know nothing about this, I take what other people say. That's right. Um, what I can hear, what they say is the quality of the drugs is different. What they give to the black community compared to what the white community gets. Oh Lord, they, these conspiracies! I know that's what that's what I'm. Hey, that's what I'm here when it comes to drugs, the more money you have is the better quality drugs that you can get compared to when you don't have as much money. You get what they call the mixed up stuff or the cut up stuff. You know, yeah. this is what I'm just hearing. Yeah, well, that's that may or may not be true, but drugs are drugs at the end of the day. A lot of people that, um, and when you're dealing with barbiturates, you talk or you talking about heroin, you talking about. Promethazine, you're talking about pharmacy level drugs and all of this that a lot of people tend to be addicted to mm -hmm. or have been throughout time. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we ingest drugs. Our culture loves to the they want to be numbed from the society. escape of right. you know we're looking for an escape. So for us, is it has become uh, a coping mechanism for us to use drugs. I like I said. I don't, I, I understand that that's the case, but I don't believe that that some of these entertainers that people are talking about, especially when you got long careers, I look at long careers as a sign that, that this long successful doing careers. doing something right. Yeah, and, and it don't take, if you've had prolonged success in rap as a rapper, somebody with a microphone, I just understand that your attitude is probably not gonna be the greatest. Because it takes, this is a lot of dealing with a lot of different moving parts. Right, a lot of different exactly. People. And so, not everybody who enter um, this industry uh, is a people person. They just love 
what they do, their career, as mm-hmm. in music, they don't always, just because you love music, that don't mean that you love people. Yeah, but that don't mean you're supposed to be an asshole every time somebody come up to you trying to talk to you. Well, when you meet you know a, when, when like you nobody meet, want to okay, support nobody an asshole. You say that, but when you I meet a, you meet a little Wayne or something, you might admit this man once in a lifetime, man. This man, that's why I try to say you, as human beings, if the woman is having a bad day at McDonald's, man, Messing up your order at the at the fast food place. Messing up your order at the at the restaurant or wherever. People have bad days, but people hold tend to hold celebrities to a higher uh, a higher blame level. But than, people say different things. Just like if you if you're dealing with a woman who is having a bad day, the first thing men say, "Oh, she ain't PMSing." Yeah, yeah. She this that whatever. Just like you know, with celebrities, they say, "Oh, he on drugs." Yeah, yeah. You know, people just say right. things. Or if somebody have road rage on the street or driving terrible, and you can't even see who's driving, the first thing y'all say, "Oh, that's a woman driving." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely saying that. She know that's a, talking about her husband. Yeah, that's a woman. <laughs> Got to be a woman. You, you know what? No, I mean? no dude ain't gonna drive so like people that. People make just. Crazy. That's not crazy. That's, that's not crazy. That's not really yeah. crazy. It's been true a lot of times. To that's prove sometimes it. it's men. We don't even go there. No, but, very sexy. You know, exactly. but at any rate, a lot of times I've seen <laughs> them cringing on the steering wheel. You don't know if I want to, you know, get out of my way. You know, I've seen that on a lot of occasions, and usually it ends up being something of a Email. But one thing I always yeah. say about going back to the uh, music industry, and as I said, I'm a very observative person. And mm-hmm. first, when I started thinking about, you know, um, people in the music industry, I don't wrong them for taking substances because to me, I, but I don't think it's right, but I don't wrong them. The reason why I say that, seeing a person who have tour dates back to back to back, going to city to city, they can only take a nap in in the bus, driving or on a plane or whatever, but you're still supposed to be writing music, doing your know, regular thing, trying to call your kids, trying to call your wife, girlfriend, whoever, hardly get no sleep, but then when you meet your fans, he's supposed to be smiling all the time. Somebody could have pissed you off, whatever, but you gotta have this perfect attitude when you're around people. Hip hop is so professional, man. I feel man. sorry. Like- for a lot of entertainers, I don't, because I don't not the bag they you get. Gotta, you know, because you I gotta don't. always keep up a certain persona, and it's hard. Yeah, but they get money. Maybe it, it maybe of money. course, and it's your dream, and your yeah. dream gonna have it's gonna have whatever the the other part of it is. But at the end of the day, hip hop, excuse me, is so professional now. Like it's not gonna, you're not finding a lot of people missing shows, and it's corporations in this stuff. Like so, whatever the. Uh, Perspective or the the perception of people doing drugs, I don't really believe is as you know. Of course, there's gonna be some examples, but I don't think in real life that there's is is much to the as level as they think. advertise it. Nah, mm. man, these people, some of these people that we talk, whether it could be Future, it could be anybody. Like, man, these careers is off into their second decade. Man, what are yeah. you talking about? Like, and then these, they not frail. These people not frail. These, they bright eyed and bushy tail when you see them moving around. You know, I don't know. I'm, maybe I'm just not qualified to speak on it. I don't know. So when is David Street dropping? David Street is coming soon. Because um, I've been hearing it's coming soon. Coming I've been soon. seeing, I've been seeing stuff coming up saying, this you know. This is a different process for like, me. Like I'm learning, I'm learning so much about. Because you always be dropping them quick. Mm-hmm. What's and up I'm with going this back time? To that. This I'm time gonna, right here up. is, um, Man, we're doing everything the right way. and So you were doing the wrong way before? I was doing it in a... Things have to be thought out because it's more than you. When it's only you, you can drop that shit when you get ready. When you're talking about having to have a 12-week uh, uh, rollout, they, they want your album 12 weeks earlier, mm-hmm. the uh, distributor. Mm-hmm. When you're talking about a single, they want your video and your audio three, four weeks before an album come out. Then you got to do your press. You got to do all of these different things. So if you want to do it right, things have to be scheduled. Things have to be discussed. Okay, what we doing? This what we doing? All right. And we have to create all of this stuff that everybody sees around these projects and whatnot. So, and I'm just thankful for it. You know, so this is the first time you're doing it like this? Yeah, and that, that you I like was, it better this way compared to better, the way that you used to do it. I can only tell when I complete the process. Right now, I'm still in the in the middle. I got to see what all it, you know, what all it leads to, you know, and and 
then I can say for a fat weather it was. But at the end of the day, it's my evolution. This is my taking the next step. You got to be willing to grow past what you was doing before. Like, what's the next thing? I've proven that I can hold my own in music for years, coming out of prison and releasing music at the weight that I did. I want to go back to being more frequent, but this is my first time actually going through the system and doing things the way it's supposed to go. Let's see where it go and we'll see. But David Street is going to be coming out. Super soon. <laughs> Look, Kiki said, I just love penitentiary niggas, man. Mm -hmm. These stories y'all be telling him. Just how how did you and him just, how do y'all remain? Y'all always cool and y'all always been hanging and mm -hmm. he, he always got respect when I talk to him about you or whatever. How did y'all build that relationship like that? He, um, just talking every day. Like, um, of course, I think everybody know that, of course, before I got locked up, I had a, a album um he was on the album he don't remember that that was in 2006 um and you know upon me getting out of prison and just reconnecting trying to rekindle what i did on my first album when i got out you know i just reached back with him um went and shot the video in south park came from austin came down here alvo my boys from uh sunnyside south park they they looked out for me king store everything and it's just like um, we just maintained uh, uh, our communication, but I started talking to him more and more as I was doing what I was doing with Crowns and dropping the Crowns albums and, you know, having somebody that I could talk to about what I Bounce was doing, ideas off. even though I was doing something totally different. Even He's done what I'm doing, was doing at the time, but... You know, and he just kept telling me, like, man, you're going to have to do this shit the right way. You're going to have to quit playing with this shit and get for real and get into the system and uh, make an honest effort at streaming and, and all of this and play the game like how the game go. Because you you obviously doing it. You're building up the content, um, the catalog. So just every day. And, you know, man, God don't make no mistakes. Talking to him every day, um, we just got a bond, man. I, I, Talk to him more than anybody. It's the person I probably talk. That is the person I talk to the most. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, for sure. So, and just having somebody like that, Texas, um, of course, that legend word is done got so played out. But I think people really don't understand. Like this nigga, really the dude down here. For you to be on that project like that says a lot. You know. Yeah. Um, that was a very thought out legend project. Album. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For that sure. legend album was thought out properly. It was, right. it was, it was. It's one you can put in. And you don't have to fast forward off past no song. Right. Like this guy, he didn't miss with that one. And mm -hmm. and I can't wait to the next one. But at the end of the day, for you to be on that project, just how was it when he even asked you to be on it? Uh, you know, I was glad he asked. I tell you that, I just, <laughs> shit, cause, cause I didn't want to ask, and I was in the process of seeing like how it was coming together. You know, with Juicy J and 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 the beats that was that was sent in, and just the the production level and how it was, you know, coming with these songs and shit, and just everybody that was involved in making sure that it was what it was supposed to be. Man, it it was magical. So by the time I got asked to do something, which was I think towards the, you know, toward the last quarter of it, shit, I was, I, I was already so happy just to be a part of the process of it. Hell, I, I had felt like I had learned so much from it. I was good with that. So when he asked me, I'm like, shit, hell yeah. Damn, I'm going to be on it too. This <laughs> shit really is a classic, you know? So, yeah, man. Uh, but he honestly, he just a real good dude, man, for real. Like, um, and really just, have answered all my questions in this shit and um, allowed me to flourish under under his tutelage, but walking me in these buildings, and you know I think these people don't give a fuck about me, man. They, I'm walking up in here, he's taking care of, of making sure that they, you know, give me a fair shot, you know what I'm saying, in these buildings and whatnot, and using his favor to put me in these rooms and shit, so, um, yeah, I, I I I salute him. That's my brother, man. Right there. One thing I can say, Show. you you definitely uh, when when I think about just the fact of you even dealing with him, like it was a blessing for us to even be able to go over and do the interview we did with him. That was through you. Uh -huh. um, you know, I talked 
to him with Mr. Lee, but you really drove it home. He even said on the episode, he was like, man, I could not do this, man. I D wasn't for the play with me about this. We don't play about y'all, you know, yeah. so thank you for even allowing us. Come on, man, we you know, Blessing us to be A lot of shit be happening up. behind the scenes. Now, you know, need we... to know the truth, though. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, for you to bless us and even be that persistent to say, man, you need to talk to these people, man, these good people, and link us like that. Yeah. That's a he, blessing. He be, very, he be very busy, and then he's not always having the opportunity to, to see, like, Detail for detail What's going on In the culture He got big shit Happening all the time Like Some crazy shit He just did his uh, uh, Just did his Nike shoot uh, You know His Air Force One shoot He got his own Air Force One And shit So You know We just I'm seeing amazing shit happen to him all, at all times. So, you know. Yeah, well, I'm going to be real with you. You one of those guys that, like I said, you you deserve everything to come your way. You know, you you definitely been linking. I look at your video, your videos, your visuals, film by Miyagi, man. Just how did Miyagi? The, yeah, Miyagi. Not Miyagi. I, I say Miyagi because I say it fast. I say Miyagi Slow if down. you want me to. So you, you know what I'm saying? But, right. <laughs> but at the end of the day, um, just how did you and him uh, uh, just, we talked about it a little bit when we did our show together but just the fact of how I didn't know that y'all was even locked up together I yeah. didn't know the history of how you what you meant to one another you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. I think that was the dopest thing man so just give me a spiel and how this nigga get so good and technical with what he now, does how he got good and shit I, I don't, don't know. know what that is yeah I don't That's know something that. totally different but but that was my next door neighbor on medium custody um we we established our bond over there I don't know uh, you know we this is my dog it was my next door neighbor we was you know, bonded over books, just different things that we was all learning at the time, solid. Um, and, you know, just kept the bond going. But I didn't know that he, you know, he wrote when he got out, he kept it solid with me. I didn't know that he had turned to um, shooting videos because he was one of the coldest rappers over there, you know. So on the unit, um, I never would have thought that he was going to pick up no, no camera and shit. But the fact that he only picked it, that he picked it up, and not just picked it up and got good, but became a whole brand and shit. Like, so, you know, we all very proud of him. Real shit. That's, wow. Hell yeah, because we ain't see that coming. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, like some of the people that these people that he's he's did work with, you know, these people are, are, are in deals and moving and flourishing. Yeah, man. but the, the role, I'm going to tell you what's crazy to me is it's starting to shift. Like, he's giving out the 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 clout, like, you need to fuck with him. You know what I'm saying? It ain't just about like him fucking with them. It's, it's leaning, you know, the scales is leaning. So to say that that's my homie, that's like somebody it's that's big. Hell yeah, because I know that he came from nothing. Yeah. I personally know that. I know that he had to pick it up and he had to make it work and he didn't actually built a whole brand out of that shit. So that's hard. I, hell yeah. I see you be recognized by Trill Talk, No Pill Talk a lot of times too. Like, Who? Uh, you like he be uh -huh. posting that he gonna always post something with LD. Yeah. Uh, uh, just uh, shout out to that boy. I True. always rock with him. Uh, just what does it mean for the for for the bloggers, for the podcasters, for the people to keep your name in their mouth? Just basically. Well, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna. This is very important. I'm glad you actually could it kind of put my mind in in where. I, man, look. As far as this, as far as like um, that East Texas shit. As far as just different people. This album means so much to even like the development of like our region and shit. You know, like mm -hmm. this, this ain't no bullshit. Like where we at in this process right now to make it from, you know, coming out of prison to doing these albums to acquiring Mr. Lee to just every step that I done went through in this shit to get to this place to where it's getting time for this album to roll out. And it's like, I don't think people understand how much good favor that you need in order to be able to exist in this shit, honestly, and to not be, or, or you're going to be one of them rappers that's, that's scamming on the side or hustling, selling drugs on the side. To be in this shit, honestly, man, you're going to, so I'm just, I'm really hoping to communicate that over to people, how much support that I need for this project. This This ain't no... This is not no game. This is not a joke. I have to put an album into this culture that's going to resonate with these people and be around. You know, this is Texas, so, 
if you do it well, we're going to remember it forever. We, we'll keep that motherfucker forever. So I'm looking at this as my opportunity to, to put that level of project into the game, mm -hmm. you know, and we'll see. We'll no, see, but I, this I, shit is very important. No, no, I, you can tell. It's not no like motherfucking saying, joke. It's what, very important. What, the, the one thing, it, uh, and you stated it earlier when you were talking to Miss Jamaica, was the fact of, and she brought it up, how how you was always, and even uh, Lil Kiki, when I, when I interviewed him, just how you was bringing those albums, those 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 those, see, those crowns right after each other, bam, 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 just layering them out, and then all of a sudden there's a quiet, there's a place of quietness now, you know, before this next project, and I think it gets the the ones who really, uh, you know, fans of Al D three hundred Davis Street, it, it's it's an anticipated wait to where people are, or, or they waiting on it, and they ready, and that's a good thing too, you know what yeah. I mean? As long as it deliver, you got to deliver, but the that right there, you know, I don't feel pressure from that as far as quality of music and all of that. We built to do that, you know. What it is is all of these other ancillary parts that that have to go right in order for this to get past the level where I'm at to the bigger level to take a, a righteous step into the game for real, you know. I, I look at all of this as like, damn, like, you know, where we at in this process is is beautiful, but I have to really kill with it. And I need everybody to see it as it's not just me taking this step. This is us taking this step. Anybody that was down with me or have bought anything from me or anything like that. This is where we at in this shit. And it's, we at a point right now where it's time to, you know, get everybody on, on the same page, you know. Yeah, so. well, when you think about like, Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee and you, you know, y'all formed this, this, this relationship. Mm. And when y'all formed this relationship, it was like, okay, now, you know, it's, uh, it's, it, it, you know, on this project, he's, he definitely on this project as well, right? Yeah. This sure. is a whole, you know. Uh, Lee is on there. Buddha blessed this B out of ATL. Real big in the Migos catalog. Greg Street, uh, you know, uh, X-File who did the first single silver and gold. He got some more tracks on there. Um, uh, J Stars, you know, of course the Power Walls, the Keys, the all of them, you know, just it's it's a collective effort. Um, you know, Bruce Bang makes him like every every step that you gotta really take in this shit. Like we took all of those. So steps. you say Power Walls on that? Is this your first time working with Power? Yeah. Pa, yeah. how, how 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 was that? If you can just, Man, I know you can't he touch came it. he came in there over delivered. He came in there and got damn me. He was only supposed to do, y'all gonna see what he did. Like he, <laughs> he came in there and like he was supposed to do like something and he ended up doing something totally like, man, he, you know, like, I, I, man, I ain't gonna lie. I, I don't receive a lot of love in this shit. <laughs> I have, man. I, at some point I just gotta just say it. Like I don't received a lot of love in this shit. So I feel like I got abs I have no excuse. Like I have, there's yeah. nothing I can blame it on. <laughs> I can't blame but you put a lot of in, the, in the, your music. You put a lot into uh, it, man. So it, I, it's well deserved that you would get, you know, the respect you deserve, and, and right. the doors would open the way that they're opening. So I think that's hard as hell. And it's the same thing for you. you well, know? you know, you know. I mean, I ain't gonna pop my collar in that yeah. nigga, but yeah. you know, a nigga fly. You know, I ain't gonna lie to you. You know, if I don't do nothing else, nigga, I did this. Right. You know what I'm saying? You did. <laughs> You did, and you didn't start that long ago. So nah. to see where y'all done grew it to, man, you know, I'm very proud of you, man. You man. took care of your business, man, and and it's only gonna get bigger and better, man. Well, man, like we definitely appreciate them. you, man. The love you show, Boss Talk 101, sure. the troopers, man. Y'all niggas be down with a nigga like Four Flat Tire. Yeah. You know, a country yeah. nigga know that slang. Mm -hmm. yeah, Four Flat Tire slang, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so That's we down, up, we man. down, man. And so I think, I, was it, did, it, it was one thing else I wanted to ask you about, and I got to talk about the elephant in the room. You know, okay. I always got the elephant in the gotta room. Got to do it. Um, Kanye, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot going on. I heard the minister speak the other day. Yeah. He ain't spoken a long time. Right. Um, what do you think about all this riffraff? I don't need you to get, don't get banned trying to be on Boss banned. Talk 101. Right. But, you know, but just give me, but don't get banned. Right. But just give me your spiel, you know, just as far as on Ye? Yeah, just on the whole situation and mm -hmm. what you see and how you, you know, because you, you know, your intellect is special, nigga. Man, thank you, man. But <laughs> at the end of the day, like when you start talking about what happens is as a culture, 
we jealous of other cultures. In particular, we jealous of, of Jewish people. We jealous of how they how they can band together and, and be on one accord. So when you have somebody that says anything that angers them or anything like that, they come together, it's so fucking real. And it's, it just, like we resent that because we should be like that and we just, we just can't do it. We can't get out of our own way and do it. So when it comes to um, what Ye have been kind of like exposing people like Kyrie, um, what they've been exposing and what the, uh, what Minister Farrakhan has said about just our, our frustration is not unwarranted. Like, you know, and nothing that, that Kanye done said or any of these people have said that have cast a light on business practices, the way people handle um, blacks or whatever in entertainment and in sports, where we are the, the engine of what people want to see. You know, it's a lot of problems, uh, probably a lot of unfairness in it, right? Uh, everybody's done had to fight for that to get a, you know, it, it could be, Floyd Mayweather have said some of these same things. But he had to go out there and prove his his value while also superseding and overstepping the ones that's trying to hold him back. So we we in that kind of position. So what we have not seen is a, a person make it to billionaire status, knowing that it takes a lot of corporations to get there mm -hmm. and to just burn the motherfucker down. Like after you done accomplished all of that by by exposing what's actually taking place. I actually kind of tip my head to that shit because most of us, we come from nothing. You know, we, we, we ain't gonna fuck that bag up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Too many people depend on us to fuck that bag up. But for him to go up there and speak his truth like that, I think it was honorable. Now, maybe he didn't do it correctly. Maybe he's not the always the one that's expressing himself in the most, the clearest, most articulate way. But, it, you know, I just kind of look at him as shit. That's more than a lot of people would have ever done, you know, so... Well, I and, the way, and to me, it's like a, like a regular Joe is not affected by the Jews or by other cultures as much as somebody who is raising in power. He, the people that he's around, he see a lot more. He see how mm -hmm. they control certain things when we don't really see that. Right. And where you talk about, but we do see it. We see it, but we don't see it. On that level? On that level. Well, we see it at the bank. We we see it. We 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 see it when we try to buy cars. We see it when we try to sell our houses and they appraise our house for less than what they would have if it had been a white person to do it. You know, we see it everywhere. We don't become numb to it and it's like it's really nothing to us. That's the reason why he can't, he's not finding any support did, really. Did but you it, think oh, but did you ahead. think that it was big for even Farrakhan to even come out because he don't come out here lately for him to just come out and speak on something? I, I like him as that individual that can that can give levity to situations and kind of like call the players for what they are to where we not over, getting overboard because you know we get emotional. Yeah, he's gonna be that one that's gonna come out and say, you know, hey, the brother Kyrie said this, the brother Ye saying this, and you know we've talked to him and these Jewish. He's basically letting you know that a lot of these individuals that's saying something negative about uh, Ye or Kyrie in the moment, they might have relationships with these people, so they can't. They can't speak out as well. I like the way he don't never demonize mm -hmm. people that have differences of opinion if they if they black. I like that. I like the fact that he can have a conversation with you and, and scold you without embarrassing you. You yes. know, I think that's dope. And the way in which he does it, he he articulates his words so he's been doing this for ever. Ever. Right. So he's very, very versed in doing it. But just like when you were talking about um, people of certain cultures coming together and you you mentioned Jewish, but I don't it's not only Jewish because even like being from Jamaica, you see how Chinese people, they stick together. You see how people of different culture, they stick together. Jamaicans on a the whole, they stick together mm -hmm. as well. But why is it that African Americans, if you want to say, or you know, in America, niggas, niggas, right, right, don't do so. It's it's very hard for us. It's just in our DNA to be honest. Some people blame slavery for that. Well, it's in a, America, it's not just slavery. It's a lot of different reasons. Our uh, getting into it with one another is very entertaining to people. Like like us competing against one another in whatever fashion that we do it is something that drives, it draws attention. 
So people have learned to exploit us for that. You know, uh, we can't even just say that so-and-so is jamming and so-and-so is jamming. We got to put both of them. He ain't fucking with him. Like, we just like that. We just, I say they can come together. Cause if people can come together for this Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys? Yes. If we black, so, cause black folks come together. Dallas Cowboys. Like, oh, Dallas Cowboys. Trash. This, this. <laughs> <laughs> Dallas Cowboys, this, this, this. And they come together yeah. and nobody can say yeah. nothing about the Cowboys. That's they come how, together and they stick together for company. Right. But right. if they can do that over a team, yeah. why they can't well, do they that do for that, their own culture? Let me say this. do it over the white No, no, no. Let me let me just say this. It's not just the Dallas Cowboys. It's just that we do it a little bit different and others. I'm glad you know what I'm saying. But I'm just saying, you know, uh, yeah, the, the, the other yes, teams, the other oh, teams you serious? know, the other teams, they do their thing too. But, you know, at the end of the day, we just do it at a level to where you, you, it annoys you. I get it. But we just basically got to understand that we do come together at points. Um, hey, and uh, yeah, Dallas Cowboys, let's go. <laughs> okay. Go, go, yeah. go. I'm a Steelers yeah, fan, go. but Hopefully you know, that's, can that's win this thing. Steelers. Steelers. Yeah. No nah, man, it's cool. It's it ain't cool. like the cowboy. <laughs> but check it, man. We in Texas, man. It's going down. Houston, Ice Texas, time. that is, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. Thank you for coming on the show, man. Uh, how can people get a hold of you if they trying to reach man, out? You already know it's the same thing. Yeah, D three hundred everywhere. I hope so. we did you justice, man. Let me see if it, did we leave anything, anything you out? left out. No, man, I know yeah. we didn't. We covered, flipped it, boom, boom, it's yeah. over. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. did that. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on Boss Talk 101. Yes, what sir. a boss's talk, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss's talk. Hey. Ain't nobody trying to say that. <laughs> and we out. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs>